Nigeria currently has 174 universities. 40 of them are federal, 45 are state-owned, while 79 private universities are credited by the National Universities Commission, NUC. Among the accredited private universities is the Redeemers University, established in 2005 by the Redeemed Christian Church of God. The institution is running with a vision for a future generation of creative, innovative, inventive entrepreneurs and raising exemplary global leadership as change agents. Redeemers University was established by the Redeemed Christian Church of God uh, in 2005 under the able leadership of our father-in-law, Pastor D.A. Uh, the university was established uh, mainly to raise spiritual commandos. Uh, as a matter of fact, when Daddy was doing the inauguration, he told us that uh, product of the university will be em employers of labor. We, in the university, we have eight faculties, and um, we have. Um, a school of progress studies, as well as several centers you know, and units. As of 2013, nobody ever thought a day would come then there will be a threat to Nigeria's health security. The general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God and visitor to Redeemer's University, Ede, a highly revered Pastor E. A. Adeboe, Envision the need to have a structure within an organization that will be a beacon of light and a hope of a dying nation. This vision motivated the leadership of Redeemers University to set up a center of excellence that will not only be a censure of all eyes in research, but a potent force which will play a significant role in safeguarding the health of the nation. So the emergence of the African Center of Excellence for Genomics of Infectious Diseases located at the Redeemers University, Ede. It is not surprising that by 2014, when the center became operational, it played a major role in the containment of infectious diseases in sub-Saharan Africa. Anchoring the research center is one of the illustrious sons of Africa an icon, an academic of note, and a researcher of no mean repute. Professor Christian Happy, a professor of biochemistry and genomics at the prestigious Redeemers University, Ede. When you look at the history and then the way this center came to be, you realize that it is really God driving the center, you know, and deciding to establish the center. And he established the center for, for a purpose, and then that purpose is being fulfilled. Uh, we established the center in 2013, and the center becomes very functional in 2014. And toward the end of 2013, I realized that we had Ebola in West Africa. By March 2014, I gathered around in a redemption camp researchers from various African countries, Sierra Leone, Senegal, Nigeria, US, and Europe. The reason why I gathered them is because I had a premonition that Ebola was going to spill over from Guinea and spread out from Guinea to other West African countries. And then the question was, if Ebola spread out, what do we do? We brainstormed for a few days, for three days, and we identified diagnostics as one of those major gaps that existed in the landscape at the time. Because we knew if you can't diagnose a disease, you can't treat it, you can't manage it. So we realized that we didn't have the adequate tools and technologies, for instance, for Ebola diagnosis. And what we did between the month of April and month of May was to work very hard and then come up with some diagnosis you know, that we actually uh, uh, that, that, that we actually distributed to our colleagues or collaborators in Liberia, in Senegal, and then in Nigeria. And as uh, I rightly predicted, you know, by May 20th, because we had a meeting 
17 to 20th of April. But by May 20th, a month after, you know, Ebola spread and got to Guinea, uh, from Guinea to Sierra Leone. And the technician that we actually trained, and then the kits that we provided for diagnosis, and the PPE that we stocked up in Sierra Leone are the ones that are used to diagnose the first case of Ebola in Sierra Leone. But then, apart from diagnosing that first case of Ebola in Sierra Leone, what this center does, because Sierra Leone is one of our partner centers, so what we do basically is to do something that is unprecedented, unprecedented in the history of science. That is, within the past, I mean, in three weeks, we are able not only to trace all the contacts of that index patient, but we are also able to sequence 99 Ebola genomes and make these genomes available to the world to use. And then, we, I mean, through that action, singular action, we pioneer what we call free and open data access. We started that, and then that has become the norm today. But then, by 22nd or 20th of July of the same year, we had the first case of Ebola in Nigeria, the very first case. I'm called in the night by Professor Tomori, 8.40 PM. And then he's being told that there is a suspected case in Lagos, but they don't know exactly what that is. And they've, they've tried malaria, they've tried area case, I mean, other uh, diagnostics, and then they're all negative. And then I leave my house in the baron at 8.40 PM, and then I drive all the way to redemption camp, and walk overnight on that particular sample. And then by 6, 35 the next morning, we had a confirmation that we had Ebola in the country. That was the very first confirmation. So I called the Minister of Health at that time and informed him about that, and then I also informed you know, the Ted Mainland Hospital to let them know that, let them know that the patient is Ebola. So we did that confirmation in a very short time. Within eight hours, we were able to do that because I remember the first test that we did confirm was around probably 3 a.m. in the morning. And then we did additional tests to revalidate that. So, and we subsequently diagnosed a lot of tests, a lot of samples, hundreds and thousands of tests in Nigeria between July and September. And in the end, Nigeria is free of Ebola, right? So Nigeria is free of Ebola because we had the technology, we had the knowledge, we had the skill. That thanks to this center. Other countries in West Africa did not have that luxury. Ebola killed thousands and thousands of people in Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia because this country did not have the knowledge, they didn't have the technology, they didn't have the skill. But Nigeria gets down in the history of public health for successfully containing an outbreak like Ebola within 93 days is in large part due to this center because this center was there to provide the necessary help. We did something that was unprecedented. Within four months of the outbreak, we went, we developed a test that could, that, that could detect Ebola in five minutes. So which means that we went from a six to eight hour diagnostic to a five minute diagnostic test. And that test was approved by the US FDA and the WHO. The emergence of SJIT as a research center has become a national player and a continental powerhouse in the field of medical sciences for the diagnosis, containment, prevention, and elimination of the world's most devastating infectious disease, which has put on hold the global social, political, and economic growth in recent past. That was like the foundation that also gave us the capability to be able to con uh, make, make a presentation for the African Center of Excellence, which is being funded by World Bank. And so that came up, we put in the application and then that came up in 2014. And since then, we've actually been able to show that we are up to what we call ourselves. Because if you remember, it was in 2014, June, July, that we had the case of Ebola. 
and the center came up to its name by also doing the first testing of the index case that time and we also contributed largely to all of the testing of all the suspected cases during that period and that led to the early containment of the disease in Nigeria as compared to other countries that had the infection. We also use a new technology called microbial metagenomics to discover two brand new viruses in Nigeria and then these rhabdoviruses, we call them Epomavirus 1 and Epomavirus 2 because these viruses, we discovered them in Epoma. And that, that was the very first time that, you know, that a new virus could have been discovered in the world in 40 years. And this center just did that. Another major achievement that this center did was, when we remember in 2017 when we had a monkeypox outbreak and then from nowhere, after 40 years of no monkeypox, the sample came here and we were able to provide the first map of monkeypox in Nigeria. In 2019, there was an outbreak of a mysterious disease in court in Edo State. Young school children were dying. All tests in everywhere in Nigeria proved negative. 20 of those samples were sent to this lab. In 48 hours, we were able to go through and use a novel technology that we have developed here called microbial metagenomics, and we showed that what was killing the children <clears throat> in that part of uh, Edo State was a strain of yellow fever that have not been circulating in Nigeria for the past 100 years. We made this information available to NCDC. Within 48 hours, I also received a sample. NCDC declared an outbreak and sent the team to Edo State, and then they did a mass vaccination. Within two weeks, that outbreak was contained. His jade has remained a force to reckon with in the fight against infectious diseases across the world. The current novel COVID-19 has further put to test the capacity of the center as it receives samples majorly from southwest states on a daily basis and is able to confirm all cases in record time in line with the WHO protocol. The first case of COVID was detected in Lagos. On, I mean, early March, NCDC sent a sample here to Redimers University Ede in SG for us to characterize that sample. They wanted to know what type of virus. We, they were suspecting, yes, it's COVID, but was COVID the same or different? Was it from China or was it completely different from what, I mean, from what was circulating? Again, Within 48 hours, this center was able to elaborate the first genetic map of COVID in Africa because that was the very first one Africa could do. And with that, we were able to trace back that although that patient was from Italy, he got infected with a virus that was circulating in Switzerland and also very similar to the virus that was circulating in Finland. And also, that that virus circulating in Switzerland and England had its, original or, um, its origin from China. So it was clear that at that moment that that person didn't get infected in Nigeria because there was a lot of speculation that because he came, he was an Italian, he probably could have been infected in Nigeria, but we were able to trace back the origin of that particular virus. And then uh, since then, we've been testing a lot of um, samples here, you know, supporting the National Center for Disease Control, supporting Oshun State, supporting uh, Ondo State, supporting Oyo State, Ogun State, Kwara State. You know, in doing all this di COVID diagnostics, so at this, this center really has been uh, of great help. You know, not only to the state around, you know, but to Nigeria as a whole. We are talking about coronavirus, which is an infectious disease, and our center is on infectious diseases. And then we are now applying our expertise and the capacity that we have into finding solution to these infectious diseases. And so that's what makes it known worldwide that okay this is a center set up by world bank and they are now living up to their name so that the investment as given by world bank is actually now coming to fruition and if you talk to them at the world bank they are very happy about it that yes this investment is actually worth it after all and 
they now looking back and saying, oh, beyond before 2014, we couldn't have said the same as we are saying now. that we have here, you know, are state-of-the-art equipment. You know, these equipment are state-of-the-art facilities. So, for instance, this is a high seek 4000. This piece of equipment, there are only three places in Africa where you can find them. One in Kenya, one in South Africa, and here. And we have another piece that we have not pulled out yet because there's no space. And that one is called a Nova 6 6000. It's the only piece on the whole of the African continent. Even in Europe, you can't have about three of those pieces. But we invest a lot of money to get them. You know. But I can't talk about the cost of that because if you say it, people will scream. Because it's a lot of money. So this, as I gave you the cost, that equipment that we're taking over there is about twice the cost of this, this particular one. But that's a choice that we have made as an institution to deny ourselves the luxury of living a very good life, but investing in infrastructure so that we can actually turn this place around and then make this place, you know, the center of attraction for Africa. Because it's only when we actually have facilities and equipment that can match what is available in the U.S. and available in Europe that we can actually be competitive. Instead of buying four SUVs, right, we denied ourselves four SUVs, but we bought this, this equipment, for instance. And this is more than four SUVs. This is about six SUVs, if you wanted to put it. The center is well equipped with state-of-the-art facilities that are second to none. I was trained in Harvard and I could say we can measure up like we have all the sophisticated machines that you can find in any molecular lab. We even have some machines that in some parts of um, the United States they do not have. So part of our name in ISJID is pathogen hunters. So we go all out to hunt for these pathogens. We don't wait for them until they come to meet us. So we're ever ready. Currently, ISJID Redeemers University, EDE, has a total of 17 postgraduate students. The center continues to build human capacity in genomics while raising young, highly skilled scientists that will fight against emerging and re-emerging diseases. Okay, my name is uh, Judith Uche Oguzie. My name is Paul Eniola Luni. My name is Bankoli Bola Jokwe Miola. I'm a PhD student here. I have a first degree in uh, veterinary medicine. And part of the reason why I'm here and passionate about the kind of research we do here is because I believe that for us to solve the healthcare and outbreak problems we have in Nigeria and Africa at large, we need to have a holistic approach that looks from the animals, the human, the environmental factors to provide lasting solutions. I wasn't exposed to like genomic technologies and you know molecular biology technologies and stuff like that, but. Coming here today is good exposed me to cutting edge, like to, you know, help me to acquire cutting edge skills. I've uh, been sent on a number of international trainings where I've been able to work with like world renowned scientists. I've been opportune to go for so many trainings. I've been opportune to join people working on Ebola, even though Ebola has come and gone. Lassa, monkeypox, <laughs> now it's COVID 19. So whatever comes around, even yellow fever, people have worked on yellow fever here. So it has really broadened my experience. I've learned a lot. This particular freezer we dedicated to COVID-19 samples. When we receive samples, we put them in here. We keep them in Ziploc. We label from which state because we handle samples from different states. So we keep them here before we carry out what we call extraction, which is the first stage. This is a liquid nitrogen tank where we equally keep samples. We are not just dealing with COVID-19 here. We have so many other things we are doing, so many other researches going on. This is very cold, about 140 degrees centigrade. Then this other freezer too is still dedicated to COVID-19. When we take those samples from the first freezer, we take them into the hot lab, we extract, we carry out the qPCR to determine whether that person has 
COVID-19 or not. So all the samples we've been collecting so far, after we've done extraction, the rest of the samples we store here. Our extracts, which is RNA, we also store here. I can open this. We've trained hundreds of, you know, uh, people across, not just Africa, across the globe. We've trained people all the way from India, from, from Bangladesh. We've trained people from the U.S. We've trained people from most West African countries, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Senegal, uh, name it, Mali. We've trained people from across, and then Central Africa, Cameroon, you know, Gabon, Democratic Republic of Congo. We've trained people from across the continent, and we've trained over 900. We have mostly graduate students that we've trained. Mission, the vision of the center. And that is also what World Bank wants us to do. What they want us to do is to develop capacity, build a large number of people. And so if you look at what our mission says, is that build human capacity in genomics. I got a call from the Minister of Health from Liberia. I was thanking him because he was like, the students that you sent to us are the ones managing the outbreak or the pandemic in, in Liberia. Although the center is majorly funded by the World Bank, with the support of some other development partners in Nigeria, it is not without some challenges, especially in terms of space. A lot of equipment are still in the box, awaiting installation. We do have a, uh, our own fair share of challenges. For instance, space is a problem, as you see. Uh, we are very congested, but uh, fortunately, our center, uh, probably where they've taken you, we're almost finishing that. So hopefully, we're moving to a new site. That will give us more space. But as we're moving, you know, I can tell you that the space is already too small because right now we have over. Uh, probably 17 graduate students and then we have just space for about 22 graduate students. In spite of the challenges of expansion, SJD has continued to win laurels for the center, the university, the nation and the world due to its groundbreaking contributions to the field of genomics. In 2013, we got the NIH award for the H3 Africa NIH Africa research project and that was like the foundation that also gave us the capability to be able to con uh, I mean, make a presentation for the African Center of Excellence which is being funded by World Bank. What you have here is better than many countries in Europe. What you have here is can match if not better than many universities that you see in America. That is, uh, we have students that came from Europe and they have been admitted it. We have students that came from the U.S. and then they were really shattered by what they saw here. So I think, you know, this is a true center of excellence and then that's why, you know, SG and then Rudimus University actually have become a brand, you know, in this space. So it's really not, uh, it's not bragging, but at least our achievements speak for us. The center is quite comfortable in terms of management and control of any disease. There is still so much to be done in the nearest future. In this coronavirus today, no one knows tomorrow. Using his research to drive our education. So even after COVID, there will be a lot of more research that will be done to make things better and to prevent this kind of global transmission of this kind of disease. This center, I, I believe that, you know, given the right support, this center will become the AP center, the center, the heart of infectious disease research in the world. And I see that's not being ambitious. I think it's only the right thing to say. Because I've always said before, you know, I mean, many places where I give talks in the US and so on, and, and Europe, to say I'm, I'm a proud African. I'm not just proud of my African heritage, I'm also proud of the resources that we have. We say we have a lot of natural resources, but I'm also proud of all the viruses and the pathogens. Because we should be proud of having them. We should be proud of owning, uh, owning Ebola and then malaria and then Lassa fever. We should be proud. Develop the right thing. We should be the ones selling diagnostic to the West. We should be the ones selling vaccines to the West. So this is what I see for this center. Becoming the center, that place in the world where we can actually not only just develop knowledge and create knowledge, but turn those knowledge into tools and technologies that we can actually sell to the world. And that becomes the source that will feed Africa. This development is in consonance with 
the vision of the founder of this uh, university, Pastor Yadeboye, that this university, before long, will be rated as one of the best, in, uh, not only in Africa, but in the whole 